What's up guys, Randis Reviews here again. I just got through doing my unboxing of my French Mass 4956 rifle. And as I alluded to in that video, the box that came in was a double box. So I have that other rifle that I received in that order right here before me. And I think we'll go ahead and open this up. Again, I picked these two rifles up from Empire Arms. Empire Arms is a little bit different to order from than most of your other CNR websites. They have an ad that will periodically go out to the people on their email list with the firearms that they have available. And it is a mad dash for anyone looking at that ad to put in a purchase on those firearms before they sell out. Empire Arms is a good resource if you're looking for specific collector grade firearms. They have decent descriptions of what they're offering with pretty decent pictures. However, the ordering process is a little bit complicated. I will say Empire Arms did a fantastic job of packing these two rifles. Plenty of bubble wrap and tape. It really should be the industry standard. Some of the things I see are not okay. There's our buttstock revealed. Some of you will already know what kind of rifle this is. And there it is. This is a Swiss carbiner model 19. 31 aka k31 nothing in the chamber so from what empire arms said this rifle is in very good condition it's supposed to have a mirror bright bore we'll go ahead and take a look at that right now see what that bore is looking like hopefully it's as good as they said it was it's supposed to have all matching serial numbers but there's one major flaw with this particular rifle and that is right here Alongside the receiver, there is a crack there. They describe it as being a minor and easily repairable crack, and I would probably agree with that. It doesn't look too bad at all. I think I'll just open this crack up some, put some Brownells Acroglass in there, and then band it together. Hopefully that'll shore that up enough to where it's not a problem in the future. The stock shows service wear, minor dings and dents, but nothing too serious. There's a little bit of a color mismatch with the front handguard and the actual stock. And I do see some pretty minor rust on the metal part of the handguard here. Look at that beautiful Swiss crest. That's one of the things about the K31 that I like the most. It's very similar to some other Swiss rifles with the straight pull Smith Rubin like action, but the other Swiss rifles don't have that awesome Swiss crossed crest. In the late 1920s, the Swiss government decided that they wanted to standardize their military on a universal short rifle. Up until that point, they were fielding both a long rifle in the 1911 and a carbine in the K11. They found the K11 carbine to be a more practical weapon than their 1911 rifle for the majority of use cases. The carbine was much smaller and lighter, making them far easier for the troops to handle. The 1911 rifle was superior to the K11 in accuracy, and this is something that the Swiss didn't want to sacrifice with their primary small arm. Attempts were made to improve the accuracy of the K11 carbine, but this greatly inflated the cost of an already expensive rifle. It was decided a new rifle would need to be developed. This new rifle needed to be no larger than the K11 carbine in any significant way. It also needed to be less expensive to produce and at least as accurate is the 1911 rifle. Waffen Fabric Burn developed an updated action based on the Smith Rubin design. In this update, they shortened the overall length of the action. They moved the locking lugs from the middle of the bolt all the way to the very front so that they would lock up directly flush with the chamber. This resulted in an action that was superior in every way. The accuracy of the new rifle not only matched that of the 1911 rifle, but exceeded it. They did manage to achieve some cost savings as well over that of the K11 carbine. That new rifle was this rifle, the K31. The K31 was put into service in 1933 and remained Switzerland's primary small arm until 1957 when it was replaced by the STGW57. The K31 did go on to see limited service with Swiss forces all the way up until the 1970s. Of course, the Swiss were a neutral nation in both the world wars. Had they been a participant in World War II, this would have been the rifle that their troops would have been armed with. In total, about 520,000 of these rifles were produced. Weight on this, 
Comes in at just under nine pounds at 8.8 .8 pounds. Overall length is a fairly short 43.6 inches. The barrel length is 25.6 inches. And this rifle is chambered in the GP11 cartridge 7.5 by 55 Swiss, which is a fantastic cartridge that has very similar ballistics to that of 7.62 NATO. One of the interesting things about the history of these rifles is the cost. The Swiss put a tremendous amount of money into these rifles. The cost of the Swiss government to produce a K31 was about 151 Swiss franc. If you convert that to USD and then adjust for inflation, that brings the cost of these individual rifles to almost 3,000 USD in today's money, which is completely insane. These rifles are tremendously well built. They use very precision machining. The materials are all of the highest quality and the fit and finish of pretty much everything is Impeccable. Just like many other Swiss rifles, the K31 is fed from a six round detachable box magazine. So it had the ability to quick change the mags. You could single load cartridges from the top into the magazine, but primarily to reload this rifle, you'd be using a charger clip. This is a Swiss charger clip here. In contrast to previous versions of the Smith Rubin Action, they opted to put aluminum bolt knobs on the K31 for durability. They changed the op rod a little bit. It is more cylindrical on the older versions of the Smith Rubin Action. As I was talking about earlier, those locking lugs were all the way in the front, making a very rigid and precise lockup. These rifles are considered some of the most accurate military surplus rifles ever produced. The barrel on the K31 is free floated. Since we're up here in the front, there's our bayonet lug. This is a stacking rod so you can make a rifle TP. The middle barrel band here is held on with a spring clip and a screw. Our rear sight is a tangent with a U-notch and it is graduated from 100 meters all the way to 1500 meters. I really like the safeties on these Swiss rifles. They're very easy to use. It's a very simple ring pull. You just pull it out and rotate it and that saves the weapon. And to take it off safety, you just do the same thing in reverse, pull it out and rotate it. The K31 is a rifle that I've wanted for my collection for an extremely long time. I remember back 10 or 12 years ago when these were being mass imported into the country and you could get one all day long for like 300 bucks. I should have got one then, but I didn't. So now I'm paying the price in 2020. This rifle came in at $525, which is really a decent price still. I see K31s continuing to go up in price. And even now we're behind the rifles on the surplus market for less than what the Swiss military paid for them back when they were produced, which is an interesting little tidbit, I think. I'm really looking forward to putting this one on paper because I want to see if the legendary accuracy of these rifles is really all that it's cracked up to be. All I need to do for this one is fix the little crack here, which shouldn't be too big of an issue, find myself a sling and a muzzle cap, and it will be good to go. Overall, I'm very happy with the external condition. I don't really think I could have done much better for just over $500. And I'm pretty stoked to have this awesome piece of engineering in my MuleSark collection finally. That was the video, guys. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Sub to the channel if you want to see more military surplus rifle content in the future. If you found something in this video helpful or interesting, share it because that really helps the channel grow more than anything else. And I will catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Peace.